There are many great places and beautiful sights to see, and Alaska is one of my top 10 places I'd love to visit. Way above the Arctic Circle, where there are no roads or trails, just amazing wilderness and wildlife in their natural habitat. Huge migrations that go back for thousands of years. This place is one of the last true places of beauty and wonders on the earth. One of Alaska's most desired national parks is the gates of the Arctic National Park. There are 663,000 miles of wilderness of beautiful sights to behold in Alaska. And there are eight national parks to preserve the beauty and wonders for the upcoming generation. There are 430 species of birds alone and 112 mammals of different design. In early July, all the brown bears gather to the streams to take advantage of a free meal. And a well-experienced bear can catch up to 30 salmon per day. By November, snow has covered the range, and with the frigid temperature, only the most fit can survive. The wildlife is abundant in these isolated parts, undisturbed and left to do what nature intended for them. In 1959, Alaska was founded as a state of the Union, and as recorded in 2015, the population was 738,000 citizens, and the gates of Arctic Circle National Park was established in 1980. Now gold mining has been a major industry in Alaska. Gold mining started in 1870 and is over 8% of the total national production. Klondike Gold Rush was a migration of estimated 100,000 prospectors between 1896 and 1899. The first discovery of gold was by a local miner on August 16, 1896, and it set off a stampede of prospectors. After the prospectors set out for Alaska gold rush, the population exploded from only 500 in 1896. By the summer of 1898, the population exploded to over 30,000. Gold productions reached its peak in 1903 after heavy equipment was brought in. On March 13, 1968, oil was discovered in the Prudhole Bay. Trans-Alaskan Pipeline is about 800 miles. The pipeline was built between 1975 and 1977 during the oil shortages. The building of the pipeline was challenging to engineers and they faced many difficulties due to extreme cold weather and isolated rugged terrain. By the summer of 1977, the first bit of oil traveled through the pipeline and was in full-scale production by the end of the year. But of course, Modern technology does not come without consequences. By 1979, there was over 100 oil spill mishaps, but new laws were put into place to oversee and protect our environment. I know with all the modern technologies and the rapid growth of our country, we all have to do our part in saving these amazing, beautiful sites so our children and our grandchildren can enjoy these many wonders. Now, Northern Alaska is an ideal place for people wanting to see these phenomenal sights. Alaska is one of the best places to see the famous light show. The Northern Lights occur because of solar activity, and displays of the Northern Lights occur during the equinox months of September and March. An inland location will be likely the best place to see this modern marvel. There are also 15 amazing waterfalls in Alaska. Thunderbird Falls, Anchorage, Alaska is perhaps one of the best falls for a family venture, and it is only about a half an hour to drive from the nearest town. The routes that lead to Horsetail Falls is a must for the experienced hikers to enjoy. 
Flowing only in winter, dropping down 176 foot, the fall descends into two streams and many more beautiful sights that the eye can behold. The many varieties of wildlife flourish in such an isolated environment. Being untouched and undisturbed preserves these many beauties and is a sight to see. It's hard to imagine such things that are pleasing to the eye and the many awesome events and natural wonders of our world. Alaska was purchased by the United States from Russia on October 26, 1867. Alaska was admitted as a state in 1959. Alaska natives are indigenous people of Alaska and are often defied by language groups. Alaska natives have lived for generations throughout this land. A traditional style of hunting, fishing, and gathering food allowed natives to survive in a harsh, difficult environment. Eleven distinct cultures can be described geographically. Eyak, Ling, Hadia, Shimshan. They live in the southeastern territories. Unapec and the Yupik St. Lawrence Island live in the northern parts. The Yupik and the Cupik Alaska natives live in the southwestern parts of Alaska. Anchorage, Alaska has the largest amount of natives with a population over 100,000. According to the 2014 census, 18% of Alaskans' general population is American Indian or Alaskan natives. Alaskan natives migrated into the area thousands of years ago. In the 18th century, arriving by ship, the Russians began trading with Alaskan natives. The American traders did not reach this area until the late 19th century. Alaska beholds much in beauty and historical culture, as well as an abundance of wildlife. And springtime is the time for birds. The Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge is one of the national wildlife preserves that Alaska has to offer. In this vast and productive land, birds, plants, and mammals flourish a large portion of land that goes into the eastern Bering Sea. It is one of the densest areas of breeding waterfowl on the ever-ending landscapes of the Yukon. There are no roads to be traveled on, and all its glory is wild habitat for many species. There are over 50% that are wetlands and rivers and ponds and streams, a place where the ocean and fresh water and land join together in harmony. And such conditions is a perfect place for a productive landscape for many breeds of waterfowl and birds from all over the world. Many birds migrate to the delta for mating and springtime hundreds of thousands of species flock in from New Zealand, Australia, Thailand, China, Japan, Korea, even from the plains of Africa. All continents of the world, birds flock to the delta to raise their offspring. The abundance of food is one of the many reasons the birds come to the delta to ensure their young will have an abundant food source so they can grow to adulthood. The central coast is the most productive area of 15 to 20 miles. You have an increasingly diverse and abundance of bird and waterfowl. Around a million geese come to the delta to raise their young. Pacific looms, tundra swans, sandhill cranes, sandpipers are just a few of the many species that come here to raise their offspring. One to two million ducks flock here every year. As we go further inland, we can find many large mammals in their natural habitat. Alaska contains about 98% of the brown bear in the United States and 70% of the total of North American population. About 30,000 brown bear are estimated to live in Alaska and 1,400 of that number are hunted each year. The brown bear is the top predator in Alaska. Alaska also contains a majority of grizzly bear. Kodiak Island is the home to the Kodiak bear, another subspecies of the brown bear. The black bear is much smaller and are found in large numbers on the mainland of Alaska. They are considered a nuisance and they frequently invade camps, backyards, and streets in search of an easy meal. And there are as many as 100,000 black bear in Alaska. 
The Alaskan polar bear population are the most abundant along the Arctic coastlines. During the summer months, they migrate to the coastlines. There are only about 4,700 polar bears known to inhabit Alaska. There are many more large mammals that live in Alaska, such as caribou. Caribou are a large-scale migratory animal and have been known to travel up to 50 miles a day. The migration activities of the caribou are driven by the weather conditions and the food available. The caribou are usually found in the tundra and mountainous regions, where there are few trees. However, in winter months, herds spend time in the boreal forest areas. There are an estimated 950,000 caribou in the state and about 22,000 fall victim to predators or hunters every year. The Alaskan moose is another large mammal that you will see in Alaska, and it is the largest in the world. Males weighing in at 1,200 to 1,400 pounds, whereas the females weigh between 8 and 1,300 pounds. The Alaskan natives have hunted moose for years to provide a food source as well as pelts for clothing. About 6,000 to 8,000 moose are hunted every year, and a population of 175 to 200,000 exists in the Alaskan area. If we go to the mountainous region, mountain goats are to be found throughout the southeastern panhandle and along the coastal mountains of the Cook Inlet. The constantly migration to different areas from the Alpine Ridge in the summer to the tree line in the winter. And also we have the wood bison, was once Alaska's most common large land mammal in a combined effect of habitat change and human harvesting were probably responsible for their disappearance. The last reported sight of a wood bison was in the early 1900s. In 1928, 20 American bisons were imported to Alaska from the Game Commission and released into the area of what is now Delta Junction to bring a population back up. By 2003, there was estimated report to be over 900 wild bison in Alaska. Another large mammal is the musk ox. They roam through the plains in Alaska and there are about 4,000 musk ox in Alaska. Mature bull are about five feet in height at the shoulder and weigh six to 800 pounds. Females are smaller, approximately four feet in height and weigh between four and 500 pounds. By the mid 1800s, musk ox had disappeared from Europe and Asia and Greenland and North America. By the 1920s, musk ox also disappeared from Alaska, with the only remaining animals being found in Greenland and Arctic Canada. In 1930, 34 musk ox were captured in East Greenland and brought to Fairbanks to help restore these indigenous species to Alaska and were transferred to Nuviak Island, a large island in the Bering Sea. The herd thrived here and by 1968, the population had grown to over 750 animals and by 2000, almost 4,000 musk ox roam on the Seward Peninsula on Cape Thompson and Nelson Island in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. With all of Alaska's abundance of wildlife flourishing, naturally there are predators to keep the balance of the offspring in check and to assure that only the fittest survive. Wolves are at the top of the list of predators in Alaska. The wolf does not pose a threat, but large packs with experience is one of nature's most effective killing machines. The large males can weigh up to 145 pounds while females weigh around 100 pounds. They are also known to kill for sport, not eating a single bite. The packs have even been known to stand up to polar bear or grizzly bear. Another Alaskan predator, small but fierce, not to be reckoned with, is the wolverine. The wolverine is weighing in around 40 pounds, but this fierce and aggressive animal can easily take down prey 10 times their size. At one point, these creatures were hunted almost to extinction for their thick coats, Wolverines are an elusive and intelligent animal. Even though they're around, a sighting is rare, known to roam around areas up to 15 miles a day. The tundra regions also behold another predator. The red fox have been observed digging arctic fox from their dens and killing them. The adult fox weighs about 15 to 18 pounds. The red fox is the most common color. Several color phases may occur in a litter. Red, cross, silver, and black. The red fox expands its territory following the similar migration of its preferred food source of small prey. The Arctic fox employs hunting styles uniquely suited to ice and snow-packed areas for food sources. Adapted to sub-zero temperatures, the Arctic fox searches for rodents living in burrows under the snow. Additionally, 
They rely on scavenging on leftovers that polar bears or other animals leave behind. The Arctic fox are low on population where the red fox are. They are not to be found in coexistence very long together in the same environment. With only 120 individuals of these species being recorded in areas where red fox live. There are many animals that roam on the plains and the mountainous regions of Alaska's rugged terrain. We've covered a wide array of animals on land. Now let's take a look at a few in the many waters of the Alaskan area to explore the marine life coastal waters. It offers many opportunities to see the varieties of marine life. One of the larger species is the walrus. They're a huge animal and an adult bull often weighs close to two tons. Their tusks are elongated upper canine teeth and can do serious damage when fighting occurs. Many other marine life such as stellar sea lion, fur seals, otters, dolphins, and even whales. Some of Alaska's largest marine life is whales. These majestic creatures are our closest species that goes back for thousands of years to prehistoric periods. Beautiful and graceful for such a large social creature, whale watching is one of Alaska's top outdoor adventure activities. Humpback, orca, fin whale, and gray whales are the most commonly sighted Occasionally, blue sperm whales and minke whales can be spotted, making an appearance in other regions of Alaska. Summer months offer the best viewing opportunities. Gray whales are the first to arrive, typically in April. Humpback and orca start appearing more towards June. Alaskan peak whale season is considered to be in May through September, and whales can be seen from the Gulf of Alaska in the southern parts to Eastern Bering Sea and Northern Bay Fort Sea. Migration is the primary reason whales are so prevalent of the coast of Alaska. Now that we come to the end of our Alaskan adventure, we can reflect on many beautiful sights that Alaska beholds and the wide diversity of wildlife and marine life that Alaska still has to offer. In its rugged and isolated parts, Alaska is one of our true majestic places left on Earth where we still can be inspired by its beauties and wonders.